Okay, Matilda. So my first question for you is, tell us a bit about who you are and what your kind of goals for your brand have been so far. I am fashion designer and I have my little friend, little brand of um, clothing. I do mostly upcycling, but I still do new stuff too. But upcycling is my main direction and this is my favorite things, thing to do. And uh, my goal is uh, uh, to show to people how we can live without producing uh, more and more and polluting everything. And um, also show to people another fashion and uh, another beauty. So I want people be a little bit more acceptable to each other and uh, be more open and aware of what they really want, what they really like, and not what um, somebody tries to, to tell what to like, if it has sense. Yeah, no, of course. Um... So you mentioned upcycling. What made you gravitate towards that as your kind of form of um, designing? You mean, how did I come to this upcycling or? Yeah. yeah, so did you, like, when did it kind of start your interest in kind of sustainable fashion and that kind of thing? So it, it was from the beginning. I took, uh, I took a school, designer school, and it was Russian academy metrics and uh, they taught we had a class there and uh, it was it was called something like screwed jacket oh wow such a lovely name and, and they it's it's this class is uh, the purpose of this class is, is uh, to open your creativity to make you think out of box to a little bit lose you up if you want and uh, this class was about to make the jacket to take the jacket and make something crazy with it just to not think just do something crazy and whatever and i it was my favorite and uh, since then I, I can't stop doing crazy stuff with, uh, with the things and I started already doing sometimes I use new materials for example I have dress from socks and yeah I saw uh, that one no, socks of course nobody nobody worn before <laughs> so yeah so I and you know, since then, first of all, I liked to do this. I had so much fun. And the second, I already started thinking, this is great way to, to start the, my brand uh, based on this concept because I changed my mind about everything what I was planning from the beginning uh, about this manufacturing and and I decided that that's what we have to do now yeah no of course so um what do you think about fashion as a way to bring attention to the climate crisis it's You know, you can you can attract attention to everything you want with fashion. It's a some sort of tool which you can um, use for taking attention uh, of people and talk to the people uh, what you want to show. You can show 
you can you know you can show the using this uh, concept and uh, upcycle different materials you show that uh, we are in crisis now and uh, let's people try to to be more aware of what we do what we buy what kind of quality these things and um, maybe to change our minds that maybe the piece shouldn't be new how still a lot of people they have this um, stereotype that the piece should be new and nobody was, was wearing it before but if to look at that from another perspective uh, like in a piece of art it doesn't have any sense uh, and you know just buy beautiful thing and and uh, yeah and live with it, the, it and enjoy it and keep it uh, wear it, whatever. Uh, we can we can show also social problems with uh, fashion. Like sometimes I uh, do fashion shows and uh, make everything. Um, so it's always idea behind, and people start to think what is she showing what is she trying to tell they start asking they started to discuss and more people start being aware about uh, many stuff yeah i i think you put that perfectly like i i so agree um i think fashion is one of the best ways to actually show um kind of social issues and this thing about climate change especially because of fashion's impact on the world. Um, so you mentioned social issues. Um, and I know one of the topics you'd like to tackle is beauty standards. Um, and I think some people would decide that fashion would be an interesting medium to explore beauty standards just because of how ingrained beauty is with fashions what would you say to people who kind of don't understand why you explore that through fashion well because uh, uh, many people today they are not happy uh, with themselves they have some blocks they think that they are not beautiful enough and uh, I just want people to I and you know, I really do think that everybody is beautiful because I, I look at, everybody, at everyone and they see this beauty. And I want people to see this beauty, first of all, in themselves and also in another people too. It's, it's enough to think that this, this, is, this person is beautiful, this person is not. I think the beauty is in the in personality it's in the eyes it's inside of ours and uh, what is uh, what is now people think may be ugly big ears big noses big mouth it's actually very beautiful and uh, it shows your personality even more and uh, it shows your uniqueness. So I'm trying to uh, uh, to make people think this way. Yeah, no, I think I think that's beautiful, honestly. Um, so kind of the way you go about your designs and your process has that changed? Has your creative vision been altered by the um, pandemic at all? It, it didn't change, but, you know, during the pa pandemic, I created some nice pieces, which is probably I wouldn't have if uh, it didn't happen. So I had a, a lot of handbags in my place because we stopped using this 
our bags to go to shop uh, and uh, because they didn't accept our backpacks, our bags. And uh, we had to buy this uh, little handbags, which are awful quality. You can't use them twice because they are oh, like God. very um, fragile. And uh, it was so much in my place that I just decided, oh my God, it's so a shame. And I have to make a dress from that. And they made a dress from these handbags. It came really, really beautiful. So this thing also, I have a dress from gloves because when pandemic started, we were panicking and we ran to the stores and bought a lot of gloves and masks. You remember that? So yes, it was my parents. panic <laughs> and we never used them. Never. But we bought so much because, because we didn't buy in the store because stores they were empty uh, people bought everything and and under this panic we bought so many gloves uh, latex glove black and uh, th we never used um, maybe i took one uh, one pair to use when i dye my hair and that's all <laughs> <laughs> so, so I made a dress from gloves and it's it's very cool. I never published it yet, but I will publish it soon. I just need to make a photo shoot with that piece. So um do you have like a favorite piece that you've made? Like would you be able to tell me something about something special to you that you made? Uh favorite piece? Mm. I actually I have, not like my favorite, I don't have favorite. I have uh, more complicated pieces and more crazy and more mm, minimalistic. And I do like uh, more crazy stuff and I wear it. Mm, I like to use stockings to decorate my design, socks. Uh, distress the clothes. Like, I really, I am very obsessed with my last collection, uh, Oculus Day, and these dresses. They are cocktail dresses, black, black little dress, and um, they have human organs. I uh, saw these. So I saw these. This collection, I am obsessed right now. And you know, it's always changing. So I do something new and I sometimes don't want to even sell it. Uh, so because <laughs> I, I, I want to look at it, I want to make more photo shoots uh, with it. I want to play with that. And, uh, but then when I did enough, I can actually make even discount to sell it. So uh, my prices, they uh, are high when it is new. It's just because of that purpose, because I... <laughs> you don't really I want, want to. to. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah. the, um, the piece with the organs, like that was what inspired me to actually contact you. Would you mind telling me a little bit about your thought process behind that? That was... It's a very complicated and deep um, idea. And uh, this collection, the name of this collection from Latin Oculus Dei translated like God's Eye. And uh, as we all know, God, uh, he sees everything inside us. So I was trying to tell to people that uh, it, is, it is important to be beautiful inside. And uh, organs, it, it's like a me metaphor for that to tell. Uh, yes, I used uh, 
Pentacles. 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 Uh, yeah. That's how you call them. Yeah. I just sometimes I don't know English words to to express. <laughs> so yeah, and I made uh, I a little bit made a research uh, about human organs and, and how do we look inside and how how does it look and uh, you know it actually it's 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 beautiful and and uh, each shape of the organ. It, it's very beautiful if you look on this from the other side without fears and uh, all your stereotypes which we keep, which we keep in our heads and yeah and you know when i was doing that somebody told oh my god it looks like flower this yeah and i i just thought you know what it actually does it does look like flowers so yeah, no, I remember th like the first thing I thought when I saw that collection was just how beautiful it was. So clearly that message is very clear to anyone who sees it. Um, so when it comes to making your designs and collections, do you have any particular sources of inspiration? It doesn't necessarily have to be other designers. It can be paintings, artists, movies. Where do you go to get inspired? Yes, uh, sometimes I get inspired from designers too. Uh, but sometimes I just start doing and actually I don't even try to track where my inspiration comes. And it's like most of the times when I do something I don't realize uh, where this inspiration comes. It's just from, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> from nowhere. I don't know really, yeah. Yeah, no, I get like that when I write, honestly. Like, you miss, it kind of like takes over you a bit, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. kind of become another person a little bit. And it's a little bit like, oh, I don't know who I was back then. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. But you know what, what I want to add that uh, actually it's, uh, it's, it's still, it comes from something. It's our life experience, right? We, we just sometimes don't uh, realize that and it's kind of subconscious. So, and I do love art. I do love movies. Uh, I love literature. I love music. I I traveled a lot, so it's probably some crazy mix in my head. <laughs> what I have, you know, this like yeah, like some crazy cocktail <laughs> of all you've seen. Cocktail, cocktail, <laughs> cocktail. Yeah. Um. So, just to finish off, um, what do you hope for the future of your brand? Um, any future plans? And what, like, what are your hopes? Yes, I I just, I I want to grow. I want to grow my business uh, and uh, maybe not. Uh, now I am based in Denver. Um, I want to <clears throat> expand and maybe to make a shop in New York. And also I would love to make a shop in Moscow. I don't know how how would it work and uh, I have to figure it out still this based on the situation now but it it's my family there and um, I look at that direction always I, I miss uh, that place and uh, what else I just yeah and I just want people to be happy too you know and I also do want to uh, forget about uh, financial stuff. Let's be honest. I just want to uh, to make more. I mean, beautiful stuff, and maybe more and more. So, yeah. Well, that sounds exciting um so i'm expecting to see you in moscow maybe in two years <laughs> um, 
Um, yes. So, yes. Yes. So I want to say thank you so much for um, coming. Um, let me just, and thank you so much for coming to the interview.